Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is a look at the market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Tuesday, January 28th, 2014. We had some good movement in the overall market today. Uh, definitely expanded the range to the downside and used a couple of key levels that we'll be looking at and talking about. Internally, uh, at the end of the day, the advanced declines were very negative, uh, minus about 1,400 issues on both sides, but the New York trend uh, was only 0.82, which gives us a little relief in the 10-day uh, trend that we'll take a look at in a little bit that uh, has been on the move. Let's take a look at the uh, the pure price charts and uh, see where we stand with the uh, with the overall patterns. All right, first up are the NQ futures, which were relatively weak on the day, but overall still have relative strength versus the broad market. This uh, this kind of uh, distinction has really been made by the rising wedge that the NASDAQ has broken out of. NASDAQ kept climbing higher here and even made a new high recently here while the broad market was unable to do, to do so. The key takeaway here is that the uh, while the NASDAQ is definitely on the decline, it's still got a good deal of distance above the, uh, the rising wedge, which is going to be really, really key support here at about 34, 36 if we decline to that level. All right, next up we're going to take a look at the uh, broad market futures. These are the ES futures representing the S&P 500. You can see that while NASDAQ did make a new high up here, the ES did not. ES has tumbled down and actually interacted today with that rising wedge breakout. That's really key support. So we've got extremely important support at 1760 four call it and if we break that support we're going to be back down into this rising wedge and all of these buyers are going to be underwater uh, and long and upside down in their, in their position so this is a very very important level for the ES going forward now let's turn our attention to the uh, to the YM futures representing the Dow here's a look at the Dow Jones futures these are the YM contracts you can see that we did pivot above this uh, this wedge it has essentially uh, the same design, but it's a little bit different. The Dow was working in a channel where the uh, where the where the upper boundary and lower boundary are roughly parallel, whereas the ES was working in that rising wedge, and the Nasdaq side was was working in a more acutely, more steeply uh, steeply sloped rising wedge. The YM futures penetrated the uh, upper boundary here intraday, but were able to to save themselves and close right around that level. So if we want to be closing below this level and follow through to the downside, that's going to be uh, extremely negative for the overall picture. Note the pickup in volume here on the Dow Jones. One thing I like to do is uh, I like to look at the, the diamonds, which is the ETF that tracks either the YM futures or the Dow Jones cash index. Because once the market starts to move, it's very important to track the volume here because it can be very descriptive and uh, show you that the longer term players, the players who don't trade in and out of the market on a daily basis, are actually being called to action from the price action. And we can definitely see that here in the last two days, Friday and Monday here, we've seen very, very good volume, very, very much uh, above typical volume in the diamonds. The diamonds have, have obviously the same overall pattern as the YM futures but you definitely see that uptick in the volume. The reason we want to track this is for a couple things. We can see the uh, investors that, were, that are typically on the sidelines for many, many months at a time before they make a move starting to come to action here and starting to liquidate some stocks. The other important thing to watch is if we do sniff out a potential bottom at some point, we're going to look at the diamonds to see if they have a climactic volume spike. Most all uh, real bottoms in the uh, in the diamonds, especially uh, when there's a precipitous drop to the downside, are really telegraphed by a spike in volume that's usually absent on a lot of the other charts. Now, internally, in the last couple of sessions, the market has been been uh, substantially weak. We're really seeing most of it in the uh, in the Nas Nasdaq side of the market. That's the lower chart here. The uh, Nasdaq side of the market, uh, while still maintaining relative strength over the broad market is quickly deteriorating and that's definitely a cause for concern. Keep an eye on the uh, on the way that the advanced declines play out the next couple days. That's going to be very important. The uh, broad market side hasn't really uh, put in that, that leading divergence yet. A lot of times that it does. Uh, still po pointing to the upside here with a, with a pullback to the downside. If we start to get a little bit lower, we're going to put some trend lines on this chart to uh, to make sure that we're aware of where the uh, where the warning signs and the real boundaries are. 
Now, as far as the key risk on and risk off metrics, here's the uh, S&P TLT cross. You can see the sharp dive in the ratio, meaning that the TLT is gaining favor over the S&P. The TLT today didn't have a whole lot of strength relative to the market. Uh, really did at the end of last week. You can see how that ratio dove to the downside. Uh, but today we took a little bit of a rest, but this is certainly a material break to the downside. You can see it really loses this uh, this channel that we've been working in for many, many months now. So definitely keep an eye on this. If we if we continue to see an another leg to the downside here, that's going to be uh, more uh, more evidence that uh, traders are taking risk off here in a very aggressive fashion. All right, so here's a look at the 10-day trend. Our 10-day trend is the uh, the upper the upper chart here. Once we get above this 1.35 area, we're into the uh, oversold threshold. We're at 1.41 now, which is uh, which is definitely material. And keep in mind that when we do pop above this key area, that's when the market either needs to take a break and kind of and kind of level off and consolidate, or when it actually has the power to reverse. If you take a look at the spikes here above, you can see how the market was was preparing to bottom. Here's another spike above that 1.35. You can see that the market uh, leveled off its descent here and started to go. <coughs> it started to go back up to the upside and recoup this decline. Here's a look at the uh, the total put call ratio. We're going to be monitoring this for a spike above 1.25. When it does that, usually uh, traders are are uh, are sufficiently bearish enough to uh, put a bomb in the market. We're uh, definitely moving that direction right now, but we haven't recorded that uh, that climactic level just yet. Now let's take a look at the individual sectors. Let's rank them from best to worst on the day. You can see that certainly the, the more defensive-minded uh, uh, sectors were at the top top of the uh, the list here. List here, the utilities were were pretty strong. The, the consumer staples were strong. The weakness was uh, definitely in in the in the more uh, the more economically sensitive areas. BTK was weak, the airlines were weak, broker dealers were weak, the transports were weak, and uh, the semiconductors were also weaker than the overall market, at least measured by the broad market. So definitely have to keep uh, keep this in context. The one the one small positive here is that while the uh, transports were very very weak, the uh, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, oil and the oil stocks were uh, a little bit stronger than that, and the XOI was even stronger still. Uh, definitely buffered by uh, what's going on with the natural gas prices. Well, let's take a look at a couple of the key charts now. First up, here's a look at the XAU, which was the last laggard on the day. We did nine days up into the uh, static trend line. We're not able to take that out, so that key area of resistance is definitely doing what it should and repelling price to the downside. The notable development today is that we closed below the 10 EMA, which uh, puts this back to short-term negative. All right, so here's a look at the BTK index. Definitely a very negative day. We've now followed through below the 10 EMA, which makes the chart short-term negative. Not only did we turn the, sh the chart short-term negative, but we closed below that key 8 ace level at 2,500. Next support is going to be in the area of this uh, 6 ace level, which is going to be a big area of support. It's also roughly coincident with the uh, static trend line off of the, uh, off of the last 9 bars to the upside. Here's the semiconductors. Right now we're uh, definitely short-term negative because we closed below the 10 EMA follow-through. We're only uh, two days down here, and we're uh, we're already interacting with the uh, with the uh, with the 50 DMA. So the 50 DMA is the next area of support. If we break below that, then we're going to look at the uh, previous high uh, before the breakout at about 510. I have to uh, mention the Dow Jones transports, which have had which have had a very very rough couple of days. A lot of the rail stocks were very very weak uh, towards the end of uh, uh, the last trading week, and what that's done is just rolled this uh, the chart down very aggressively down from eight A's to six A's. Got uh, minor support here at six A's, and then below that we're going to have uh, much more important support at the uh, static trend line here, coming about seven thousand and seventy five. All right, now moving on to the uh, major futures contracts. We're uh, significantly now below the 50 DMA and uh, getting some some good distance below the 10 EMA. Note that the uh, CCI now is extremely oversold, and it's definitely the most oversold it's been in a year. So this is a, a notable development and should uh, put the static trend line in play as pretty significant support when it first trades. 
to the downside. To the top side, we're going to have extremely important resistance here at the 50 DMA because that also coincides with the, with the low of the trading range that we just broke down from. So to the top side, 1810 and or 181250 is going to be extremely important resistance. To the downside, we're going to have important support at 176081. And then next support is at 4 ace at 1750. Keep in mind that if we lose this static trend line here in a relatively quick fashion before we get to bar seven of the count of the uh, of the new seeker setup phase, we're going to have a pretty good probability here that we're going to uh, run at least nine bars down to the downside and have a uh, the first nine bars down in uh, in quite some time. And, and in fact, we did, never did a nine bars down in all of 2013. Moving on to the NQ futures, <clears throat> the NQ futures are still trying to hang on to the uh, 50 DMA and haven't released below this uh, this trading range officially. So if we do follow through to the downside, the 4 ace level at 34, 37.50 is going to be prevalent. And then the static trend line is going to be extremely important at 34.15 or so. Now keep in mind that when we do approach the static trend line, trend line if we continue to the downside, it's going to be important to note where we are on the bar count when we do so to see if we are actually uh, seeing a velocity move unfold to the downside. So definitely stay on top of your bar counts. Uh, you can use, use your watch list to uh, keep on top of these. Uh, and also make sure you're aware of where the levels are in the cash indexes, which we didn't have time to go over tonight. We'll take a look at those hopefully uh, tomorrow night in the report. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for TradeSite.